Um, here am I at the Canadian National Memorial at Hill 70 near the town of Lens, uh, spelt Lens. It's the newest memorial that there is for Canadian valour in the Great War. And actually it was a battle that was hardly recognised until relatively recently. Let's put it in perspective. How does the year 1917 begin? Well, it begins with the 9th of April attack, which includes the capture of Vimy Ridge, part of the, the Battle of Arras. The Germans have only just got over the loss of Vimy Ridge and the very heavy casualties this causes, when on the 7th of June, the mines under Messine Ridge are blown up to our north near Ypres. Again, the Germans reel from that. What then happens is another hammer blow, the battle that will actually eventually become known as Passchendaele, the third battle of Ypres, which begins on the, the 31st of July, 1917. Here, this sector, relatively quiet, has been really since 1915. This area is in command of General Horn, commanding the First Army. And he's really given the task of shortening the line pushing the Germans back from the town of Lons and capturing this important high ground, which is Hill 70 and the other hills. Basically, a shallow bowl of ground facing to the west. It's a considerable task, but in attacking it, he can draw soldiers away from the Germans' reserve off to our north around Ypres. It's a very important task. So who actually is given the task of doing this? British divisions, but in the centre, it's the Canadian Corps. It's actually going to be 1st, 2nd and 4th Canadian divisions with a 3rd Canadian division in reserve under General Arthur Curry. And it's a very methodical battle, partly masterminded by Major Alan Brooke, a Brit like me, who, unlike me, in the Second World War would be a field marshal, but he is an artillery genius. And this attack will be done in stages. Use of Livens projectors firing gas, but also basically incendiaries. The use of artillery to soften up the defences, and then mass use of machine guns. But the real thing they're trying to do is to draw the Germans into a killing zone so they can be killed. And what they do is basically a systematic battle planned over many weeks. It begins on the 15th of August 1917 and ends on the 25th with almost complete success. Casualties are around 5,500 Canadians, but it's believed over 20,000 German soldiers are lost trying to fight a defensive battle. And it's difficult to try and imagine what that was like, but we've got to see this battle as being a set-piece battle in which, actually, the Canadians do a tremendous job. And their next big job will be going off up to Ypres to take part in the capture of Passchendaele. So, having had a busy year, they will end it, really, on that great bit of high ground north of Ypres. But here, can we pick out one individual? I think we can. What I want to do is to simply read you the citation which goes with the Victoria Cross awarded to Harry W. Brown, otherwise known as John Henry Brown, born in 1898 in Ontario. By the time he volunteers in 1916, he's working in a munitions factory in London, Ontario, and he joins the Canadian Mounted Rifles, arrives in Britain and is then put into the 10th Battalion, the Canadian Expeditionary Force. And what does he wear as his special insignia? A blue and white armband. What does that mean? That means he's a signaller. And of course, in perfect worlds, that's going to be signal lamps, it's going to be flags, it's going to mean telephones. But on a day when things are going very badly, it is simply your permission to run on the battlefield. If you're seen running away from the front line, are you deserting? Are you trying to avoid your duty? 
With this on, it means I'm doing my job. And I think you get some idea of what kind of a soldier he is when you realise he's only been in the army for a little under a year when this happens. And this is his Victoria Cross citation. For most conspicuous bravery, courage and devotion to duty. After the capture of a position, the enemy massed in force and counterattacked. The situation became very critical, all wires being cut, or telephone wires. It was of the utmost importance to get word back to headquarters. This soldier and one other was given the message and orders to deliver the same at all costs. Why send two? Well, in case one was killed, the other one would get through. The other messenger was killed. Private Brown had his arm shattered but continued on through an intense barrage until he arrived at the close support lines and found an officer. He was so spent, exhausted, that he fell down the dugout step but remained conscious long enough to hand over his message saying, important message. He then became unconscious and died in the dressing station a few hours later. His devotion to duty was of the highest possible degree imaginable and his successful delivery of the message undoubtedly saved the loss of the position for the time and prevented many casualties.